What's up everybody, this is Arebs US here, and today I'm going to talk about a blast from the past, which is Windows 2000. And the reason I'm talking about it is because it's not dead yet. You might be asking yourself and say, Reeb, you're crazy, it's been deprecated for eons, which is true. But it doesn't mean there's not installs out there that are still running Windows 2000 Professional as a desktop and Windows 2000 Server. They are definitely out there and live, and I know that because I see it every once in a while. I have friends and colleagues who ask me, um, you know, why, <laughs> but there are different reasons they might be out there. Uh, you know, there's people who are in, in academics that, um, you know, they have very old um, stuff that is sitting around on some of these machines, and they fire it up years later. They don't know the password, or they don't even know what's on there sometimes, in all fairness, right? You as an IT administrator may be tasked with a project, and you might be told, or you might find, there's a very old Windows 2000 desktop or server running that has information or assets or even IP that's important to you guys that's sitting on there, probably a non-RAID protected drive um, and all kinds of other scary stuff. But that's that's the world out there. You might be in a certain industry uh, which has a lot of old stuff running, right? There's industries where maybe these are just running on, on a LAN or maybe something connected to some kind of other machinery in, in an industrial type of setting. Um, so there are various, you know, bad but good reasons you might run into this. But the bottom line is that th th these are in the wild. I know it and I see it. And I want to talk about some of the challenges about Windows 2000 password removal. Because that's the most common issue. You might find the machine and you wonder, well, what do I do? I can't log in. No one knows the username or password. So you have to remove it. Now, I did make another video about some of the methods you might be able to do it. Um, the biggest issue that you'll find with Windows 2000 is that you have such old computers that really today I'd find that most of these solutions that are supposed to be able to help you with this problem don't work for various reasons. Now a lot of it is that they might not even boot for two reasons. Uh, because they might be supporting uh, extensions like PAE that your old computer can't support. Uh, they might be running a kernel that is for 64-bit right? Uh, I might have different instruction sets, like uh, even like um, CMOV, that don't work on very old computers, but are, they're still running Windows 2000. And finally, the, la the last reason is that you might find uh, a lot of the other solutions out there, they use a lot of RAM. They're not intended to be used on old computers with, with such little RAM. Um, so that's why I recommend my own tool, right? I'm sorry if it sounds biased, but um, this is what I, I recommend. And uh, it's because that I, I hear all the time that it often works when uh, it does work when there's other solutions out there that just don't support old computers. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to do some a bit of research and planning when it comes to Windows 2000. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. So in this case, yeah, you need just um, 128 megs of RAM uh, to run the uh, Windows Geeks software. And it does work on old computers. You just have to say, I need the old version of the software when you download and you end up getting an old i386 version for your old computer. And it works just fine. And actually, a lot of times it still works on newer computers, unless it's really new, uh, as long as your um, uh, controller, your storage controller is, is supported. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, it generally works quite well. And so that's the reason why I recommend it. And it's just a matter of, uh, like any other kind of bootable software, it has to be burned on a different computer uh, to a CD. You take this into your beautiful Windows 2000 CD-ROM here, and we start rebooting. We click on Restart. We hopefully have the disk in there. And then somehow, depending on each computer, in this case it's F12 uh, on this virtual machine here, uh, to get into the uh, uh, the boot menu. A lot of old computers, you actually have to go right into the BIOS by hitting like F1 or Delete, and actually tell it to say, I need to start from CD-ROM first. And so that's pretty much all there is to it in, in terms of that. Um, so you just have to keep that in mind. Um, each computer boots differently, especially the old ones. Okay, and if also one other thing I want to point out. Now, if you are very unlucky, um, some very old CD-ROMs just don't really work well with, with booting, and some actually don't boot in rare cases. Um, so it's not super common, but just keep that in mind. Uh, there are some, you know, sometimes a buggy BIOS. Uh, that doesn't work. But anyway, generally, um, you should be able to boot, hopefully, uh, from a CD-ROM. As long as you don't have a, a floppy drive that everything was installed from normally, then usually CD works just fine uh, to boot from, as you can see here. Uh, so this is normal, just loading everything, and actually it's just done. And that's why I, I like this. Uh, as an admin myself, it's super easy and simple. 
you just boot it. It says uh, account name there, uh, administrator account name guest. It says unlocked and password removed. So that is all there is to it. Uh, there is nothing else that I had to do. I didn't have to find where the SAM file was. I didn't have to, you know, click and say remove the password or, you know, a click a button or enter a key to say unlock and then another key to say remove and save change. It does it all for me. It's all just done. And so all we have to do is boot back into Windows uh, and just log in by entering no password. Okay, this time I have the, the CD in there still. I'm just going to tell it to boot from the hard drive. And that's what we're doing. You see this uh, cool starting Windows uh, screen. And uh, yeah, Windows 2000 really was something, right? It's, uh, you know, the uh, first mainstream type of um, desktop, right? Based on the NT kernel. It looks a lot like Windows XP, actually. But yeah, some people still like it. And uh, if you have a happen to have a copy or ISO, uh, it's amazing how fast it runs, right? Even giving it like, you know, 500 megs of RAM is, is uh, phenomenal because that wasn't common back then, right? That's a lot of RAM. So anyway, though, we're going back here. All we have to do now um, is just click on the OK button to log in. And that's pretty much all there is to this solution, right? And we leave the password blank, right? Because all the passwords are removed. So there's no need to enter the password anymore. And we click OK. It logs us straight in. And there, the, the problem is solved. And so I hope that's been helpful. Uh, one other thing to remember as well, though, is you don't want to use this if if um, if you have uh, in encryption on it or using an uh, encrypted file system. But other than that, I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm Arim Suyas here, and I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.